this is a story y'all about how my garage got flipped turned upside down so if you have a minute please watch this vid i'll tell you all about what my friend and i did In New York State, I was born and raised in the backyard is where I spent most of my days chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, dreaming about owning a pet store after school. Just a couple of kids with ideas and a wish. 20 years later, got a garage full of fish. If you're new here, welcome. I promise I don't always dress like that. If you end up enjoying today's video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Believe it or not, before my garage was transformed into the fish cave it is now, about two years ago, my best friend and I had a whole entire tilapia breeding operation in here. In today's video, we're gonna hop in the Wayback Machine again and talk a little bit about what we did, how we did it, and why we did it. Hint, our inner childhood selves. And actually, how it all turned out. Hint, it was a disaster. Make sure you watch to the end of the video. We're gonna be announcing the two winners for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. So it was around the end of 2015, my friend's parents bought a house not too far from me. And the house came with a shipping container that they had no use for. So they reached out to him and pretty quickly he reached out to me with an idea of what to do with it. We're going to breed tilapia. He had done some research. He found out that a lot of tilapia consumed in the, in the United States here is uh, raised overseas in, you know, I guess, questionable conditions or unknown conditions, a lot of it. Our goal was to raise you know, tilapia in the United States sustainably with mainly duckweed and then supplement them with a high grade pellet. And my mind just sprung back to my childhood when you know, I just used to dream of owning a pet store and breeding fish. I actually used to breed guinea pigs um, in middle school, beginning of high school. Believe it or not, when I, had the, I bred the guinea pigs and in my backyard, I, uh, I made a little corral for them so I could put them outside. And I put like chicken wire around it and I dug a little hole. It wasn't that big, maybe it was a good gallon or two. I dug a hole and I filled it up with a pond. I think I had a goldfish or a minnow in there. Uh, in my backyard was actually an entire stream. And I used to dream of sectioning off that stream somehow and growing fish. Now this is stream was like a few inches uh, a few inches deep and maybe a few feet long so there was no way I was raising anything in there but that was my dream and I also had a dream of we had an above ground swimming pool and I know you actually see it on YouTube today where people have transformed their swimming pool into a bass pond well my dream in my head back then was to have a dolphin my favorite animal used to be a dolphin so I literally wanted to have a dolphin in my swimming pool I was always obsessed with you know wildlife and nature and you know breeding specifically so when he suggested this idea. It was, you know, essentially our childhood coming full circle. We're adults now. We're in a position where we can literally, you know, take advantage of this and see, you know, kick the tires and see what happens. Needless to say, we were both really excited about this opportunity and what we could do. So we just jumped in. Him and I both kind of, you know, we're doing a lot of research, figuring out what to do, what different species, how to keep them, how to breed them. Him and I, neither of us had kept fish in years. Um, this is before I learned about anything I know about today. The plants, the snails, the nitrogen cycle, knew nothing. So we realized that the storage container itself wasn't gonna work out. We had this idea of having multiple tanks inside this storage container in order to have like, you know, breeding racks and stuff inside the storage container and use this storage container as our fish room. But uh, we realized that wasn't gonna work, so we decided we could do it in my garage. So him and I did a little research, we watched a few YouTube videos, figured out how to DIY some stuff, we went on Craigslist, found some you know, tanks, used tanks, I forget what we paid, I'm sure it wasn't the greatest deal, but we got a 55 gallon to start, we went to Lowe's and we got some DIY stuff in order to build the, uh, the breeding tower that we, that we saw online that they needed to breed and we contacted a breeder out in Brooksville, the west side of Florida, and we drove two hours and picked up, I think it was five females to two males, I think it was seven fish or five to two ratio. I still remember the day we got the fish and driving home and the first time we fed them. Feeding our fish for the first time. Just got them yesterday. Shortly after we got them acclimated in the 55 gallon tank and we had actually built a nice little you know sump system with a DIY weir and a little you know uh, bucket sump below and a five gallon kind of bucket filter. This is where I really first started learning about DIY and how to do things cheap in the fish hobby. We were trying to grow duckweed in the bottom sump 
keep the fish in the top and have them breeding. So we did some research and we found out about these IBC totes that are about 275 gallons and people have used them in aquaponics, hydroponics before for all different sorts of projects and we thought they would work well for us. Little did we know we did things so well that within about a week we noticed the females were holding and then shortly after that, boom, we had our first batch of fry. So we kind of scrambled quick. We grabbed a few 20 gallon tanks on Craigslist and put them set up. And we thought we had this whole system going with a 55 and a 20 gallon. Granted, we didn't even have an IBC tote yet. This is just the idea we had. So things are starting to happen really quickly, a lot quicker than we had originally planned. And one of the biggest down moments of my entire fish keeping hobby, we had the fry, um, they were raising up. We had still hadn't got the IBC totes, or I think we had gotten our first one, but hadn't cleaned it yet. And the fish were getting big for a 29 gallon tank and we had extra filtration, extra aeration, they were doing fine, but I forget if it was the power went out or I might have unplugged the, the, the cord, it was on me either way, and the aeration stopped, and within two, three hours, before I saw it, 90% of the fish were dead, the other 10% were gasping at the air, it was, it was a disaster, the garage smelled like horrid, you know, I'll never forget that smell. It was our first batch, and you know, it was the first moment that I thought, ooh, we are really, in over our heads here and this whole tilapia thing is definitely a lot more than we originally you know had planned him and i also knew that things like this happened so that didn't discourage us we you know we knew what went wrong and we you know we were putting safety you know things into place i actually got shocked once we were really learning about you know the do's and don'ts and how to and how to really run a fish room and how to have an operation and you know we were learning the hard way unfortunately and you know we killed a few fish along the way Eventually, not only did we get one IBC tote going, we got a second and a third, and eventually got a fourth in here as well. All right, here's a video update. Uh, tilapia, today is August, Friday, August 5th. We now have four IBCs, three are operational. And even once we got those IBC totes up and running with those five gallon bucket filters on top of them, you know, we were still learning. We had some ups and downs. Hey bro, got the uh, third IBC up and running. Got 10 test fish in there now. Nice and beautiful again. Uh, Greta had a great idea to put the boards in the middle. So now we don't have any boards that are poking on the sides. Actually, an awesome idea. Um, we had a little complications. We lost our pump when I was changing this. The air pump fell in the tank. So that burnt out. So I burnt the pump. But uh, they're all working on this one right now. So that should be fine. Um, probably don't even need to get another pump, but eventually we will for the fourth tank. Uh, changed up all of these on the top. They're kind of coming out the side more to di distribute the water on top better. So all three of them now should distribute better. Huge surprise I found. I've been cleaning out the tanks and draining the tanks and the filters. The actual pump themselves, I took it apart and it was full of gunk. So that's another thing that I didn't even think about that we have to start doing. And then also the actual hoses themselves need to start in the regular maintenance, need to start taking the hoses and like running water through the hoses because they're just so clogged. You see that space right there is when I kind of kinked it and I was able to push some of that gunk through. But part of the cleaning process has got to be cleaning out the hoses as well. Um, that's it bro, I just really wanted to show you the, the new tank but then just kind of fill you in on all the, all the fun stuff. Right, uh, so we had about a hundred plus fry in each of those tanks and we were doing calculations about you know gallons and size and how they would grow and we realized that before we got them to our you know cell size which would be about you know three quarters of a pound to a pound you know we would not be able to keep that many fish even in those fairly large as we considered large containers and a 300 gallon 275 gallon container you really can't keep that many one pound tilapia you can't keep 100 one pound tilapia so we were realizing that especially with all the fry we had coming in and getting them to breed was not the hard part let me tell you that these things were breeding so much that we had to eventually separate the male our original process was the female would get pregnant take her out put her in a 10 or a 20 gallon let her have the uh, the fry grow them up and then put them into an ibc tote but eventually we realized Whoa, 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 we have way too many fry. We already have too many for the IBC totes we have. We need to pull the male out. So we took the male out and stuck him in his own 20 gallon tank for a while. As the fry continued to grow, you know, the whole duckweed thing didn't pan out. We, were, we weren't able to grow as much duckweed as we had hoped. So we were relying on, you know, a good quality feed 
which was fine, but then that would dirty the water because I didn't have the feeding you know, ratio down too much. The bucket filters were a lot of maintenance. You know, that's why one of the reasons why I made sure I went with an automatic system for the rack system if I was gonna manage so many tanks again, because I had this experience where I was a slave to uh, these IBC totes and cleaning these bucket filters. It was a really good learning experience. At the end of the day, shortly after that video clip was taken, um, my friend had a baby. You know, he actually has a very successful business and that took off. I was still flying across the country training insurance stuff. So I was in California and, you know, Greta and I had recently got married. So it was, the timing was terrible. So him and I actually ended up selling off all the tilapia we had for, you know, a few pennies each. We gave them to this couple who had a private pond and they just wanted to see the tilapia have a good life. So they came over here and we just gave them all the tilapia. This is what we're left with. 15, try to get as many as I could to them, but to get these last 15 would have took a long time and I was afraid the rest of them they were gonna die. Um, yeah, got one IBC already empty totally. Got this one almost empty, gonna flip it over upside down. Same thing with this one. And this one's got some water in it still, but gonna drain this one last. So hopefully by the end of tonight, all these will just be sitting here empty. And after that whole experience, like I said, we had a few 55 gallon tanks at that time. The IBC totes, they just went to the dump. The 20, the 20 gallon tanks we had, I sold those all on Craigslist. And that's where I really started learning, you know, how to sell a tank on Craigslist and what to look for and, you know, how to get more money at it. And like I said, the only tank that really stayed around was a 29 gallon tank. And everything else you see here was brand new fresh that I started getting after uh, the wife bought me the 55 gallon for Christmas 2016. So if there's a lesson to be learned, you know, I kind of dove back into the hobby pretty deep and pretty quick. And you know, there was a learning curve and I, you know, I don't regret it. I, I learned a lot from my tilapia breeding experience and I hope to keep fish on a large scale again one day. Uh, I want to transition the fish room into some breeding. I appreciate you guys watching the video this far. I know a lot of you are here for the giveaway. So let's get to that right now. So we're gonna do a giveaway for a thousand subscribers. I know we actually, um, recording this Saturday night, we just actually hit 2,500 subscribers. So a huge thank you to everyone, old and new. Um, you guys are the reason why I continue to do this and you're my motivation, so thank you. Um, with that being said, let's get to this giveaway. We're gonna pick two winners. In order to enter this giveaway, you needed to watch last week's video, like it, share a video, and make a comment. The comment needed to be about sometimes someone did something positive for you in the fish keeping hobby or another hobby or passion of yours. So uh, best of luck to everybody. Let's do it. If for some reason the comment we pick um, is me or something else, we'll just pick again. So here we go. The first winner is, it is EDC Aquariums. When I first started keeping corals, I had a guy give me three corals and a bunch of supplies I needed. Congratulations, EDC Aquariums. I hope you keep uh, fresh water as well. Um, we'll get in touch, we'll figure it out, but um, congratulations. All right, let's click pick another winner to select the second winner now. And here we go, best of luck everybody. The winner of the second package of shrimp is Sean Tunstall who says, the best help I've gotten for fish keeping is thoughtful people like you on YouTube. Uh, but in real life, having a buddy who got into fish at the same time was a huge help. Awesome, Sean. I hope these shrimp and some plants will be a huge help. I'm gonna reach out to you and um, we'll get you hooked up. Once again, a big thank you for everyone. I appreciate all your support. As always, stay positive and stay passionate.